Hey everyone, welcome back to Integrative Psychonautics. Hope you're doing well out there. In today's video, let's talk about how you are doing psychedelics all wrong. So I'm just kidding, kind of. Uh, please, first of all, excuse the clickbait here. Uh, this video is really for any of you out there who are maybe self-treating with psychedelics, trying to do psychedelic therapy by yourself at home, and maybe you're new to psychedelics and you're kind of following the kind of commonly dispensed advice online that you see in a lot of different places on the internet about how to do psychedelics at home for therapeutic healing purposes. Um, this is really for you. I want to offer you generally what I see happening where people end up having problems. Like what are the common mistakes that people are making and how can you avoid them? Also, another way of thinking about this is these are the things that if I had to do it over, if I didn't kind of stumble my way into transformational therapeutic use of psychedelics via decades of recreational use, if I was starting over, what would I do? So uh, I'd like to explain that to you in a bit more depth here because there are definitely some very common mistakes that people make that really seem to be, you know, from my point of view, kind of silly, kind of counterintuitive, uh, or just generally working against yourself. So I'd like to support you in having better experiences with psychedelics. So let's talk about it. So the first big mistake I see super commonly online is beginners and newbies taking way too high of doses because they kind of got memed into it. So uh, full caveat here, if you're one of these people who has just a super high tolerance because you are either on a bunch of SSRIs and meds that you know raise your tolerance or you're just one of these people who naturally has a very high tolerance to psychedelics, I'm not talking at you, so please don't throw shade at me. But I see people all the time who are taking, you know, three, four, five, six, seven grams of mushrooms, for example, and they're new, they're beginners, and they're trying to, you know, rewire their brain and fix themselves. And then they're having these really uncomfortable, overwhelming, brutally intense, challenging experiences. And they're wondering why it's not working. Why am I so nauseous? Why am I so uncomfortable the whole time? Why do I feel triggered? Why am I just having a giant anxiety attack the whole time? Why is my body just trembling in fear? Why blah, 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 this kind of thing, right? The obvious thing to do is lower your dose to a sane standard, what was known to be normal all before the, the 2020s dosage of psychedelics. Okay. So for most people, if you're generally kind of moderately sensitive in how you respond to drugs in general, for someone who's, uh, you know, you know, let's say more or less neurotypical average, you're probably looking at like you could get a therapeutic experience out of two grams of mushrooms. Okay, maybe a gram and a half, you know, and I would experiment if I were you in that lower dose range. That's actually not a lower dose. Two, two grams of mushrooms should be a pretty solid dose. Uh, and a gram and a half or a gram, you know, in that range up to maybe two and a half grams at most, I think, you know, and even that might be pushing it. Uh, I would experiment in that range uh, because you're not trying to just like, you know, blitz your mind with a psychedelic and just blow yourself out of the water and have no ability to think or turn your attention where you want to turn it to or process through something that needs processing through. Like if you're just eating a shit ton of psychedelics, you really start to take your prefrontal cortex and it goes more offline. Your rationality, your logic, your linear thinking ability, your ability to really like work through something decreases the higher you get. So maybe start at like a moderate dosage level, which can still be deeply therapeutic, deeply visionary, uh, and, and work with what comes up. And don't just kind of make the silly equation that we make in our weird consumer culture that more is better. That if I take more, I'll be healthier, you know, I'll be stronger, I'll be whatever. Increase in dosage does not always equal an increase in effectiveness, right? So this is a major, major, super common mistake. Uh, and generally speaking, when I encourage people to dial back the dose to something that's tolerable and manageable for them and to focus less on dose and less on the substance and focus more on inquiry and exploration, doing the work and actually like processing 
That's where that's where the healing is. Just for context, since we're you know talking psychedelics in general here, I for one you know know what I'm doing internally with myself at this point from having taken quite a bit of psychedelics, and so for me, I could have like a transcendental ego death experience on two grams of mushrooms, right? So it's it's not necessarily about dosage to have a powerful experience. You can have a visionary, you can have a mystical experience on a moderate dosage, okay? So it's more about know-how. It's more about being willing to open up. It's more about closing your eyes and letting, you know, things settle and allowing, you know, the visions to kind of arise, which they will over time. Uh, It's more about inquiry and working with the material that's coming up, not just trying to dose your way through the problem, okay? So this is the first major mistake that people are making and doing wrong is just taking way too much, you know? And you got to ask yourself, if it takes you that much to get into a place of working through an issue, what what does that say? And, and, if, and if we're in a place in our society where everyone needs, feels like they need to take five grams of mushrooms or seven grams of mushrooms in order to have a therapeutic experience, and back in the day, people would get there on two or a gram and a half, what does that say about where we're at? What does that say about... Um, how open we are about how, um, you know, willing to explore our own internality we are. You know, maybe part of the reason we're attracted to higher dosages besides just being memed into it is because we're so busy being external with our attention all the time, staring at screens, that we just aren't as good at paying attention internally anymore. Anyways, I don't really have a clear explanation as to why this has happened besides just the memetics of Terrence McKenna going from, hey, you should do this visionary five gram thing once every couple of years to becoming like, you know, a once a month thing for a newbie. But first place to start, lower your dosage. Okay, that was a bit of a rant here. My apologies, but hopefully I kind of made my point. It's really important to get your dosage right. Uh, Next thing I would do that a lot of people overlook and think is not necessary, and I think is actually a big mistake to skip this part, is uh, you should go and do some recreational experiences first. This is something you don't see online as a piece of advice, but I think it's really important to establish a comfortable, safe relationship with whatever the medicine you're going to be working with is and just learn how it feels in your body. Learn what it does to your brain. Learn what it does to your thinking patterns and your body sensations and your emotion patterns. Learn what it feels like to be on the medicine just for its own sake. Have fun. Build a safe relationship with the medicine outside of therapy, right? So, you know, whether that's doing recreation with some friends and it's just kind of a a chill, you know, house party situation or, you know, uh, a night out dancing or just a night by yourself at home that's about art and yoga and relaxing and contemplating and having great conversations maybe with people. Whatever it's going to be, I strongly recommend that you build this safe, comfortable relationship with the material you're working with and with your own nervous system on the material so that uh, when it comes time to really do the healing work, that's not the obstacle, that you're not being kind of triggered and alarmed by the sensation of medicine that you've never felt before and you're like trying to navigate, what do I do with this? How do I deal with my brain works so differently? I'm thinking differently, I'm feeling differently. I don't know if I like how my body feels, all that kind of stuff. You wanna have that sorted out, right? And this is this is a huge mistake. People just go from I've never taken a drug in my life to I'm taking five grams of mushrooms and, <laughs> and then they wonder why they're overwhelmed. Right. So I would strongly recommend building this, you know, safe, comfortable relationship in a recreational setting. It's also good, I think, just to have recreation. A lot of us just don't take time out to socialize or play or do something relaxing. And taking a you know mind-altering substance in that in that context can be really nice. It can be really life affirming. It can be really in its own right healing and and positive for you. So don't make the mistake of skipping this and rushing right to whatever the problem is, rushing right into therapy with it and then, you know, kind of essentially being underprepared to work with the material. So do take some time 
and have some recreational experiences. It's a really good idea. Okay, now from there, now once you've got your dose in a, in a comfortable spot and you've built a, a solid relationship with the psychedelic in and of itself, outside of a therapy context, then I think it's kind of wise to start to pivot towards something therapeutic, but here's the mistake people make. People go right into the deep end of the problem and try to fixate and try to problem solve and figure out what's wrong with me. And then, you know, and then they're overloaded. They're overwhelmed. It's too much. Uh, It's more intense than they know how to deal with. Or they're kind of getting swamped in all these different insights. It's hard to tell what's real and what isn't. Maybe fake memories, maybe real memories, this kind of a thing. And just generally we go right into this problem consciousness, right? So this is one of the things where kind of the kind of the background cultural understanding of therapy uh, has kind of skewed our understanding of the therapeutic process and where if we are undereducated about it, we can really make you know this mistake. Basically, you don't want to be focused just on pathology. You don't want to be thinking of yourself as, oh, I have a problem, I'm broken, let me figure out how I'm broken and fix it. You're not a machine. It's not just about problems. And it's not just that understanding of the problem or identifying the problem or you know, zeroing in on the problem is necessarily going to get you that relief any faster. What I would do first is spend some time going towards resource states. You know, spend those first 10 journeys or whatever exploring power positive, powerful positive states, right? So things like bliss and ecstasy and joy and spiritual oneness and compassion and well-being and connectedness. These kinds of feelings are deeply important to the nervous system. And to, if we're going to be honest here, this is often where people are weakest. Part of the reason we have issues in the first place is because we don't feel well-resourced enough to address them or deal with whatever the problem is, right? And so often, you know, we're really good at fixating on the problem or ruminating or self-judging or shaming or avoiding or feeling bad, right? And what we are under-experienced at is feeling really good, feeling safe, feeling blissful, feeling uh, the beauty of life, feeling vibrant, feeling uh, peaceful, feeling clear, et cetera, et cetera. So I think one of the best things you can do is spend those first few journeys instead of like rushing headlong into the problem, developing not only your safe relationship with the medicine, but also developing a repertoire of these safe, powerful, positive states that become fuel for change and transformation, that reframe your understanding of the problem by a deep knowing in your body now of how good you can feel, of how safe you can feel, of how good life can feel. That really gives you, I think, a little hope, a little strength, a little more of a sense of well-being and groundedness from which to do the therapeutic work, right? Without that, you're basically, I'm like, I'm in a bad way, I need help, I need healing, and then I'm going to launch into the core of the pain. There's no resource there to really support you and help you feel safe. You know, and maybe your therapist is resource enough, but maybe your, you know, your therapist isn't. And what happens when the therapy's over and you go on in your life afterwards, but you never learned any of these resource states and you can't call your therapist every, you know, 20 minutes or every two hours or whatever when a a big feeling comes up, right? So learning how to feel powerfully positive is such a crucial, important piece of this puzzle that often doesn't get mentioned, and and it's one of these huge mistakes that people make where they just go, oh, I'm just going to just eat mushrooms and figure it out. And it's like, slow down. Take care of yourself. Connect. The, connecting to positive emotions is not frivolous. It's not unnecessary. It's actually highly necessary. So I'd strongly recommend that as your next step. Once you've got your dose, once you've got your safe relationship with the medicine, spend some time exploring these positive resource states. Okay, then once you now have uh, you know, uh, your dosage right, you've got your safe relationship with the medicine, and you've been developing these resource states, then maybe turn your attention towards the problem and start to work more directly on the problem and on the therapeutic side of things. Um, generally speaking, I think this is, this is how it's going to go better for people. Um, 
at that point, you have resources to draw upon and you can start to work on the issue piece by piece. With the problem, what I would do is start to work more in terms of, you know, picking one piece because a lot of times, a lot of people coming to psychedelic therapy have like a whole clusterfuck of issues. You know, we have five different major issues, you know, including childhood trauma healing to do and maybe a strained relationship we're in and maybe uh, blah, 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 blah. We have a whole bunch of stuff on our plate. First thing to do is like really boil that down to what's present and immediate that needs tending to and and chunk that down into smaller bite-sized pieces of work. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't try to fix it all in one trip. Don't try to think this is a one and done thing. Don't try to like, you know, solve all of it. Don't even try to figure it out, right? You want to get into the therapeutic territory, ideally with, again, a therapist or a guide or a coach like myself who can help support you in um, working on this stuff, and, and creating transformation. And transformation is about experience. It's not about figuring out. It's not about cognitively understanding what your problem is. It's about having an experience of transformation with your problem, which is a whole other thing. Um, this is really important. you know. So take your time getting there. But once you feel resourced, then start to you know, chip away at it, I think is a nice way to think about it. You don't want to just overwhelm yourself, do it all at once. And, uh, you know, and expect to just be done in three sessions. You know, it's expect that this is going to be a path. This is going to be a thing you're doing for a year, a couple years, a few years. But that's still, you know, if it takes three years of your life to resolve a bunch of longstanding issues and you're getting relief and growth and expansion and resolution and, and a, a life upgrade along the way, I'd say that's worth it. And the last step that I'm going to kind of add, which really isn't like a, a, a next step, it's kind of parallel to the last step of working on the issue, uh, I think is also getting a bit of an education on how to do trauma work on yourself or understand how to heal trauma, particularly from a somatic perspective is very important. I think there's a lot of weird maps and theories and models out there that kind of work, you know, but are kind of convoluted. And I think... Uh, Starting to learn about somatic work and how the nervous system works is just a much more direct way to work with it. When it comes to trauma work, I want to be clear. Generally, you're going to want support. It's not something you really want to be doing on your own. You can. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, though. And uh, a lot of times, you're only going to get so far, and then you're really going to need some external input and some some real professional support around that. That's that's real stuff, you know, and that can really destabilize you if you're not careful. So please be careful with that stuff. But I would, yeah, I would just offer that, you know, along with getting your dosage right, which people screw up and people screw up, you know, uh, just diving into the therapy, ignoring resource states, you know, and then just trying to fixate on it. The other mistake they make is not educating themselves on how to do any therapeutic work. They just <laughs> dive in, you know, or read a couple blog posts and, you know, or, you know, read something, God forbid, like MDMA solo, which is kind of like, like a half truth, but an incomplete model. And then they just throw themselves at it and hope for healing. Uh, I would strongly recommend that you take this seriously and you become a student of the nervous system and you become a student of what healing is and how transformation works and how psychedelics fit with that along the way while you're doing this work. Uh, if you do all those things, I really think you're very likely to have a really good experience and have uh, much greater success with it. So um, I realize I kind of clickbaited you with the title of this video and kind of, you know, was kind of cheeky with my intro, but I hope this is useful. I hope this makes sense, you know? So just to recap here, get your dosage right, you know, uh, get a comfortable allyship or relationship with the medicine itself, just feeling familiar with it. Uh, start to work on recreational experiences first of just, you know, having fun, you know, get into resource states, having positive access to positive, powerful states, super important, then start to slowly pivot into working on the trauma or the issue or whatever it is. And along the way, you should be learning and studying about how to do that work or getting support around it. So much love to you all. I hope this is helpful uh, and I will have more videos for you soon. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll talk to you guys in the near future.